Hello, everyone. Welcome. Um, my name is Mike Agostinelli, and today I'll be moderating another live from NCCE uh, webinar. I'm happy to introduce today um, my tech savvy partner from the NCCE Prefer Pro Professional Learning Specialist Group, Jason Neifer. And he will be presenting today on uh, work at home strategies for both the first time remote teacher and administrator. So uh, Jason's day job is he is the assistant director and curriculum director for the Montana Digital Academy. Um, he was actually employee number two for the Montana Digital Academy. So he's been doing this distance learning thing for over 10 years now. So um, really excited to see what Jason has to share, and I. speaking of sharing, I would remind everyone, um, if you want to share out anything you learned today on Twitter, please remember to use the hashtags NCCE chat and the hashtag live from NCCE. So without further ado, Jason Neifer, the stage is yours. <laughs> Thanks, Mike, for that very kind introduction. So uh, good afternoon. Again, my name is Jason Neifer, and I am the NCCE Tech Savvy Administrator in Residence. And today I want to talk to you about a topic that is kind of near and dear to my heart because I spent the first five years of my job at Montana Digital Academy actually working from my house. When I accepted the job in 2010, uh, the job was in Missoula, Montana, and my home at that time was in Helena, Montana. And my wife and I were not quite ready yet to make the transition to move to Missoula. And so for most of the first five years of my job with MTDA, I actually worked out of my house. And so I learned a lot of strategies, some of which I want to share with you today, and maybe give some perspective on how how working at home can be both great and also somewhat challenging. Before I jump into my slides for today, I do want to share a link with you and I'll share, with, share this with you at the end of our presentation today. Not only will we put up an archive of this on YouTube and on our professional learning page at ncc.org, but I've also put together a series of resources at techsavvy.link slash work at home. Again, techsavvy.link slash work at home. And I've created a wakelet that has these slides uh, for sharing. I will put a copy of the YouTube archive on that wakelet along with every article I look at today. And if you've ever had the opportunity to hear me speak at a conference, perhaps at NCCE, you know I like to assign homework reading. I think a webinar or a conference presentation like this is an opportunity to perhaps have you do some additional research later, hopefully inspired uh, by my notions today. So first and foremost, uh, it's something we probably need to talk about. Working at home is oftentimes very idealized. This notion that we can uh, take our job and do it with the cozy confines of our home. It's, it's definitely not a new phenomenon, as I'm going to talk about in a moment. And if you have these ideas of being able to take your device around your house, grab your home cup of coffee, maybe put your slippers and your PJs on and then work at home, you share the perceptual view of working at home that most people think of when they think about working at home. And I always like to find stock art that shows what uh, people perceive certain concepts as. I love this notion of being in your PJs. That actually looks very familiar. That looks kind of like my dog, Louie, who is actually sleeping at my feet right now. Um, being in bed in your PJs, accessing things. Uh, this one one is a couple that's working at home together over breakfast. Uh, my wife and I have been both working at home for the last six weeks after stay-at-home orders were announced in Montana, and I can assure you I love her very much, and we've never had this style of, I guess, Folgers moment in the morning looking at our AM email. And then, of course, this notion of being in your PJs or your sweatpants and uh, accessing work at home, a very popular notion and certainly something um, that uh, people idealize or aspire to. But before I jump into that and maybe dispelling some myths and, and, and giving you some advice about working at home, I think we have to acknowledge an important elephant in the room that these are not normal times. And if you are accessing this webinar or the archive of this webinar and you are a first time home worker, it's likely uh, because not because uh, uh, you're choosing to do so, but because you are forced to do so because of the current circumstances in regards to um, uh, the outbreak of COVID-19 
And uh, I, I want to make sure that you uh, give yourself an opportunity uh, to be easy on yourself, that you may or may not be able to do what experts say are the best ways to work at home. You have a variety of different circumstances that you are facing as a first time uh, 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 work, work at home teacher or administrator. And as I like to remind myself, this is actually a picture from my desktop at home. This is absolutely a pandemic. We are in a situation that is unprecedented in the modern education era. So cut yourself a break if it's not perfect. Cut yourself a break if you don't have the perfect house or if you have many members of your family that are working or learning at home, because chances are uh, it's going to be more chaotic than it is anything else. And that is absolutely OK. Also know that I'm going to provide you the advice of experts today and also the advice I've learned personally working at home. But my guess is, is that my circumstances are very different than yours, and it's OK for you to adapt Maybe think about some things I'm going to tell you today, but ultimately do the best that you can. And my guess is, is that when this is all said and done, you know you will have done the best work that you can in light of the circumstances and situation in front of you. So with that in mind, um, uh, this, this slide might be scary. I want to give you a very brief history of working at home. I'm a past history teacher. I like to think about the past a little bit. And um, I'm not going to go into a very deep dive here on the history of working at home. But remember, homework or working at home is actually the most common phenomenon in human history. But because before the Industrial Revolution, most people did their job at home. And it was only after we developed uh, an industrialized world and people moved into urban areas and then ultimately into factories and then ultimately into office buildings and we've evolved our work culture that this notion of working at home was a new phenomenon again and I love I did a little research on some of the strategies and research base of working at home and I found this really funny article working at home with computers a uh, work and non-work issues and what I love about this article it's from fall 1984 uh, my guess is, is that if you were around in fall 1984, you may remember the computers were not nearly as functional today. In fact, your cell phone is infinitely more functional than computers were in 1984. And there was no internet. There was dial-up services that maybe you could access and be slightly productive on. But the modern day internet and modern day computer devices uh, 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 were nowhere near the, the culture and, and human development of, of 1984. But I love this quotation from this journal article that we tend to conclude that work at home will not become a widespread trend. And of course, uh, productivity, computer, workplace researchers of then um, could not uh, know at all uh, what the future held in regards to, to future work. So um, a quick review of things of where we're at with working at home. First and foremost, generally speaking, research says that working at home can be a very beneficial thing. And that in fact, when productivity researchers look into working at home, oftentimes working at home or those working at home are more productive than those that work in an office environment. And there's a lot of different things behind why this is the case. Um, for example, uh, a lot of people note that those that work at home oftentimes take more breaks throughout the day. And believe it or not, more breaks or episodic uh, opportunities to step away from work can keep you fresh and can ultimately make you more productive throughout the day. And again, all these articles will be in the wakelet, uh, the link I'll share at the end of the webinar. Again, Again. Um, also, uh, that being said, and that the research being clear that working at home is of great benefit, I will tell you in the last 10 years that a lot of companies, including many Silicon Valley companies that had offered work at home benefits or work at home perks to their workers, have started moving away from work at home. And there's been an introduction of kind of a, a, a question or a debate in the work world of, about whether or not working at home is truly as productive, productive as researchers sometimes claim that it is. Now, here we are in 2020, uh, millions, tens of millions of workers have relocated to their home because of the global pandemic. And suddenly, again, researchers and workplace experts are asking if this is the grand push uh, uh, to working at home again and whether or not the notion of working in an office building, and I would even say some of these articles mention schools, whether remote work might become the new norm of things. To be honest, I don't think that's the case, that I think humans are too social 
to vastly uh, 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 change our work environment to work at home. And if you're a teacher in a face-to-face school, you probably know already that education does benefit from the human interaction that is face-to-face as opposed to being uh, productively online. But remember, this is a pandemic. Right. We are in a pandemic era. And even if there is some idealism around working at home, the realities of working at home may be challenged by the current circumstances. And I really love this article from Stanford uh, University, uh, some discussion about the pitfalls of working at home from a Stanford economist, especially in light of the fact that we are probably dealing with circumstances regarding COVID-19 and the global pandemic that make traditional notions of working at home impossible. So um, all those caveats in mind, um, I wanna talk about some broad expert advice on the best ways to work at home and maintain your productivity and also your forward motion on your work tasks. So first uh, broad set of guidance, Routine is absolutely critical, and as much as possible, you should work towards creating a daily routine that my first tip is do your best to create, recreate your school day that at home. So whatever you're used to doing as part of your morning to afternoon schedule, your morning to afternoon strategies and productivity times, try to recreate that at best at home. And whether if you're used to getting a copy or a cup of coffee at nine o'clock, get your cup of coffee at nine o'clock. If you start work at 810, start work at 810 in the morning, understanding that if you can recreate your routine as best as possible, you are more likely to feel like you're being productive and also kind of link into the strategies from other students, fellow teachers, maybe administrators or colleagues uh, to keep that critical social connection. Now, let's be honest, again, elephant in the room, chances are if you're a secondary teacher, for example, you're not gonna be able to have your first period, your second period, your third period. If you're using synchronous tools, perhaps, maybe you're not. Whatever your strategy is, obviously this is dependent on whatever your setup is for remote teaching in your school or district. But as best as possible, try to recreate that routine to give yourself some patterns to fall back on. A second piece of advice is set a a starting time every day and absolutely stick with it. Um, It's very tempting to get up early in the morning, especially if you're an early morning person and start working right away. And I will tell you that that can be a very challenging strategy uh, because if you do not set a start time and an end time um, uh, uh, each and every day, then work will start to eat into your work-life balance even more than it did before the movement towards remote teaching and remote administrating. Um, as an example of this, we have a, a bit of a meme at the Montana Digital Academy offices. We call it one sock mode. And we talk about this a lot uh, for, for those that work at home um, on a regular basis in our organization. Uh, there have been times when you get up in the morning, it's 630 in the morning, you grab your, your cup of coffee, your cup of tea, perhaps your brand muffin, and you get started on the day. You just are going to open up the emails and see what happened overnight or take a look at the help desk or even read the news um, on your laptop. And the next thing you know, the day's tasks have eaten away at your time. It's 11 o'clock in the morning. You've not left your computer and you look down and you notice you've only gotten one sock on at this point. You couldn't even get your second sock on before you started in on the day's tasks. It is critical to maintain uh, as, as, as rigorous of a schedule as you can to make sure that the work doesn't eat into your off time. And I have some more advice about that later, but setting a start time and sticking with it is absolutely critical. And another piece of advice about productivity is that if you aren't a list maker, now is a great time to start, especially since it is likely you are not maintaining your regular schedule at school. And even if you can recreate that schedule as much as possible as part of your routine, keep out a a notepad to make a to-do list. Um, absolutely uh, figure out a way to create a, a task list in front of you to make sure that you're getting to everything that's important to you. And if you're not a list maker, if you weren't a list maker before, now is a great time to start. 
My next broad piece of advice is as much as possible, you should establish a workspace. And again, this goes back to my comment earlier that you may or may not in a, be in a position to set up a unique workspace for yourself. And I have some advice for that in a moment. But uh, if you go on the internet and look at uh, web pages, or if you go on Pinterest and find out more about people's ideal home offices, you're likely to see some absolutely beautiful, stunning uh, views of an office. I love this. It's probably a reclaimed wood desk and uh, interesting reclaimed metal uh, uh, stands for the desk, and it looks great, and it matches. It's got art involved. Let's be honest, this is probably not the home office um, that you can pull off, especially in an emergency situation. So chances are your home office looks more or less like this, which, by the way, is what my home office looks like. Although I do want to note, just for the record, if you do have a messy desk, science says you're probably a genius, and that's just for you messy desk people out there. But but setting up a workspace so that you can uh, walk into a spot to start working is really important to help you divide that line between home and work. And if you walk into an office at 8, 10 every morning, and this is where you do most of your productive work, and then at 4.30 or 5 o'clock or 5.30, you say, this is the end of my time, and you can walk out of that space again, that is really critical to helping divide the line both in your head and also in your task list between working at home and working at work, even though that space is the same space. Now, let's be honest, not everyone has the luxury of having space in your home where you can turn it into a home office. Maybe you're working with your spouse, as I am. Maybe you're working with kids at home that are doing home learning, remote learning, at the same time that you're being a remote teacher. That's okay, but one strategy you can take up during this time period is instead of uh, dedicating a spot in your home for this, make sure that you set up and then pack up a spot every day. The dining room table is your place to work and you have a laptop from school that you're utilizing to help engage with this remote learning, remote teaching phenomenon. That's fine. Just spend five minutes setting up your workspace every morning and then tearing that workspace down at the end of the day. And utilizing that instead of just keeping your dining room table set up as your home office can give you an opportunity to, again, divide lines between home and not home, right? When you're at work, even though you're in the same space, you can divide up uh, that time and you can create a very clear delineation between when you're working and when you're at home. Um, another tip in regards to your workspace is that if you are not happy with what you have, consider acquiring ideal equipment when possible. And I've got a couple of things to, to share with you. First, um, if you don't have a pair of headphones or earbuds that you can either listen to soft music or uh, put on uh, something in the background to be able to listen to your Zoom meetings or your uh, Teams meetings, uh, especially if you're working with other people in your home, investing in a pair of headphones and earbuds is critical. But also don't forget that if you're stuck on a tiny laptop, maybe your school issued you a great laptop, it's fast and, 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 and convenient for you, but the keyboard is cramped. Or as my colleague Mike uh, uh, likes to do, he carries around a mouse with him that even though he uh, has his trusty MacBook uh, air with him all the time and it has a great trackpad on it, he prefers a mouse. And so he carries a Bluetooth mouse with him in his productivity bag. And I get that you may not be in a position to invest in the perfect equipment during this time period, but if you are, consider, do you need a full-size keyboard? Do you need a set of headphones or a better set of headphones than you have now? And if you prefer a mouse or a trackpad, uh, whether external uh, to that device or not, Think about buying the perfect setup for yourself, everyone's get as close as you can get to make sure that during your six, seven, eight, nine hours a day of productivity, you give yourself a break, right? This is a primary way of engaging with your work and task life now. Uh, the next broad piece of advice is acknowledge the change in your circumstances. And this is something that I've talked to uh, actually over a dozen teachers about that are colleagues of mine uh, uh, former colleagues of mine when I was in the classroom that have said that they just didn't take very well to being in their classroom, they were largely on their feet all day, to sitting in a desk all day and engaging with their students digitally. And that's a really uh, critical issue. 
couple of quick tips for you. First and foremost, like I mentioned before, there's a lot of research to suggest that one of the reasons why that people working at home often brings more productivity is because you have more opportunities to take real breaks from your job as opposed to kind of being stuck in an office or classroom environment where breaks aren't really a part of the strategy there. And there are formal and informal ways to do this. You can set timers. I'm going to link to an article about a strategy that I use called the Pomodoro Technique. Uh, this is a Wikipedia article about it, but if you Google up uh, Pomodoro Technique, there's actually a bit of a cult behind the Pomodoro Technique, but it's basically working in 25-minute stretches separated by short breaks and then giving yourself a long break after uh, four or five work cycles. Uh, there are literally hundreds of ways to go about this, but taking a break, getting up, stepping away from the screen or the laptop and your mouse and keyboard at a regular interval is pretty critical for productivity, especially if you are used to standing in your classroom or being an active classroom teacher or perhaps an active administrator that's rarely at your desk. Take breaks, it's really, really important. Next, believe it or not, uh, there is a vast difference between uh, walking around your classroom, even if you're not getting a separate amount of exercise during the day at a treadmill, perhaps your gym, maybe taking a walk in your neighborhood. If you're just up and around your classroom all day, chances are you're getting five, seven, 10, 12,000 steps in any given day. I can tell you from my experience, I went from getting roughly eight to 10,000 steps a day when I was a classroom teacher. That went down to 3,000 after I took a desk job with uh, Montana Digital Academy. Keep an eye on that. And if you're not getting steps, that means it's an opportunity later in the day to take a short walk. Uh, hopefully you have the opportunity to do so at a safe distance around your neighborhood, wherever you live but also getting up throughout the day, maybe taking a quick swing around the backyard or walking once or twice around your house or taking your dog out for a walk uh, can help you feel better because again, this vast change may impact you. Um, also related to that, consider the impact of sitting on your bum all day. Um, there is a lot of emerging research about the fact that sitting in a desk all day is unhealthy. And it's funny because it's not, it's not very clear why this is the case or what factors uh, play into this. It's not just exercise. It's literally the action of sitting. There's uh, This particular article is pretty great from the um, Harvard Medical School. But consider either creating a DIY or if you're in a position to do so, purchase one of the great standing desks that are available because there is some scientific evidence that standing up throughout your time, standing up throughout your day instead of sitting in a chair all day long is pretty critical. Um, in the wakelet, I put in a great uh, a Bob Vila article about kind of standing desk projects, everything from using the items in your house to building one from scratch if you have some extra time and are looking for a, an interesting project. Um, or this great life hacker article from 2012 that talks about making a standing desk from scratch, and instead of sitting all day, going from a sitting position to a standing position um, as you work throughout the day. My next broad set of advice has to do with establishing boundaries, and uh, I get it. Teachers and administrators are working well more than their eight-hour day, right? That's tr been true of, of, of great teachers for really the, the length of, of, of time in the classroom. But now that you are at home all the time and perhaps uh, uh, chained to your laptop, you should do your best to maintain boundaries between your personal life and your work life as much as possible. Now I'm gonna give you a, a tip here. It's gonna seem like it's in reverse and it is a little bit. As much as possible, avoid doing personal chores or tasks during the workday. And I get it, you're tempted by this. You wanna be able to do laundry or clean the kitchen or do the dishes or engage in chores during that time because they are there, right? You're in your house, you're in your apartment, you're in your basement, they're tasks to do. And it does seem like it can help you break up work. But one of the reasons why I would advise not doing that, uh, I'm, I'm not talking about during lunch breaks, I'm not talking about if you take a morning or afternoon coffee break, but I'm talking about during your established work time, avoid doing personal chores. And the reason why is because that blurs the line 
night in reverse if after the workday is over with, um, you've been doing chores uh, a lot uh, during the day itself, you can then justify uh, doing a lot of work stuff when you really should be focusing on your personal time, right? Whether it's chores or your family or your physical or mental health. Um, try to keep that line divided as concretely as possible. Don't let one go into the other. And then two other uh, strategies here. Uh, first, absolutely uh, turn off notifications for work-related stuff on your phone. Uh, you're going to be on a laptop from you know seven to ten hours per day, anyways. There's really no reason for you to keep notifications on work-related items going during this time period. Your phone can then be a conduit back into the extraordinary amount of work you have to do online. Try to confine it during your workday and on your work device. And something that I do on a pretty regular basis, I would consider even deleting your school accounts uh, off your phone completely. Now, again, this doesn't work for everyone. For example, I need a calendar and I'm sure you do as well. So if I delete my work account off my phone, then the little beeps from my phone when I have an appointment or a conference call or a reminder on my calendar, then go away. But I would say this is a good time, if at any time, to justify maybe moving away of having your work life follow you around in your mobile device. Other broad concepts, uh, stay connected to colleagues as much as possible. And I'll tell you one thing that's really critical to homework at the Digital Academy is establishing check-in routines with your teams and coworkers. If you're used to saying hi to members of your department, for example, on a daily basis, then set up a check-in. We do that with email at Montana Digital Academy. Everyone that works for our organization does a check-in email every morning and just says what's on their agenda, uh, just so that everyone is vaguely aware of what's going on in other offices at MTDA. That is no more important than the current time because we want to find out what's going on, what's on people's list, since we don't have the opportunity to run into each other. And then also, don't be afraid to use the technology available to you in your organization. If you're a Google suite district, Google uh, Meets is awesome. It, it provides you an opportunity for as large of a conference room as you want. You've got Microsoft Teams in your district. Utilize that to maintain connection with colleagues. If you're used to engaging with your colleagues on a daily basis, then utilize the technology available to you to continue to do that to maintain your routine. And then last, um, I've seen this advice over and over and over again on work at home articles uh, about avoiding disruptions. And man, do I think that is tone deaf advice in 2020. In fact, I think you should go in another direction, expect disruptions. And I have no good advice on how to soothe your child in case they're not handling remote teaching very well, mostly because you know your child better than anyone external to. Um, I can tell you that my wife and I both work at home, both very tech savvy, both very engaged in our organizations have to work on this daily. And I think it's okay to expect disruptions and deal with them the absolutely best you can. And remember, this is a pandemic, right? This is a situation that requires that the rules as usual maybe don't matter anymore, or they at least need some acknowledgement because it's not the same as it used to be. And I love this meme. Um, I, I have pets that jump into my calls. I know I have colleagues on the webinar today. Today that, that, that have seen that happen, I think you just need to embrace it, right? If your dog likes to be on the conference call, let your dog be on the conference call. If your cat likes to jump on your lap during a conference call, make that happen. If your kids want to see what's going on on your screen, let them in, right? Try to understand that this is absolutely and 100% a special time. So the best you can do remains the best you can do. And you can do this. And if it requires regular adaptation, I think that that's quite all right. And then absolutely last, uh, break these rules, right? If you find something that works for you that goes against what the quote unquote experts say, uh, that's great. I think that uh, times like this are an opportunity for self-experimentation um, and uh, provide an opportunity for you to maybe write new rules about the way homework should work during a time of crisis. And remote teaching is not something that generally speaking districts are planning for. It's okay to rewrite the rules, maybe come up with your own concepts. Again, my name is Jason Neifer, and I am the Tech Savvy Administrator in Residence for NCCE. I want to remind you of the link to the resources. I put together a wakelet with some great articles about research and also strategies for working at home. 
Uh, before I open it up for questions, I do want to remind you that this is a weekly webinar series live at NCCE and next Thursday on April 30th at 1 p.m. Pacific and 4 p.m. Eastern. Julie Combs will join us for easy new letter, newsletters in Microsoft Sway. So come and find out more information from experts in these platforms. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it back on this screen with the link there. And Mike, uh, are there any questions in the chat that I can answer today?